Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mike M's Weekly Reads. I'm going to talk about some recent purchases uh, in my collection from the Aaron Myers collection, actually. So uh, I got the Atom number six. This was an issue I'm missing. I still need a few more issues to complete the Atom. And that was number six. I got a TC Star Spangled War Stories featuring the Unknown Soldier and also an Enemy Ace story. This is 157. It's got, looks like Sergeant Rock, but (laughs) I don't think it is. Oh yeah, it is. It says, what happens when the Unknown Soldier meets Rock of Easy Company? That man saved my life, but who is he? I guess you only see the legs of the Unknown Soldier. It's a 15 center. We got a GI Combat number 90. It's a 10 center featuring the Haunted Tank. A very unusual painted looking cover that looks like you have a uh, enemy soldier with a knife on his gun and another soldier and the Marine Corps coming around the bend in some tr- some of the uh, high grass uh, area. That's a tent center. We then got the first appearance of the haunted tank on a cover. So it's not the first appearance of the of the haunted tank, but it's the first appearance of the haunted tank on a cover. Uh, that's issue 91 of GI Combat. We have GI Combat number 95. That one looks like you have a soldier with a bazooka shooting at a tank through a manhole cover. That one is a 12 center. Then we have an R Army at War, um, 185, featuring Sergeant Rock. And it says uh, one of his soldiers is holding a gun with a flag on it, and Sergeant Rock's shooting a machine gun. The flag was dead. Could Sergeant Rock make it live again? Don't miss battle flag for a GI. We then have Showcase Presents, Easy Company, Sergeant Rock. This cover is amazing. Um, It says, in the book-length bombshell, sergeants aren't born. It has Sergeant Rock hanging out of a window. Um, Without his, he doesn't have his helmet on. The helmet's falling to the ground. One of his soldiers is holding him outside the window by the arm and he's extending himself with his machine gun so he could shoot at some Nazis. And you see another building and on the ground you see two soldiers running and a a Jeep that's uh, smoldering on its side. It's really a beautiful cover. And that's from Showcase DC Comics. We have another Showcase. This is number 76 featuring Batlash. Uh, it says, will he save West or run it wanted? And it has a picture of Batlash with a female's red lipstick on. I don't think they had lipstick back in the Wild West. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, maybe they did. Did they have lipstick? Oh, in the 20s, you had lipstick. Huh. My wife's. Uh, schooling me on the history of lipstick, even though she's never worn lipstick, only lip balm. So uh, we got Super Friends number 40. Um, Still working on trying to complete my run of Super Friends that has Wonder Woman getting arrested and says, you can't arrest me. I've done nothing wrong. We know Wonder Woman is innocent, but we can't prove it. And it says extra. We got a jack o' lantern jack o' lantern story. Inter- cool cover. Uh, we have Psycho from Innovation about the you know 
Anthony Hopkins movie. Is that his name? Is Anthony Hopkins the actor? Why does that sound so weird? In Psycho? Anthony Perkins is the Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, I knew that was wrong. So it's got uh, him on the cover and the woman that he's about to kill, I think Janet Lee. And the second issue has the shower scene, but with just a bunch of images on it from Innovation. That's the one that's not too old. I have an Eros comic, Erotic um, Worlds of Frank Thorne, featuring the Wizard and Red Sonia show, the score, the story of the girl in the bikini, number six. Didn't know there was an Eros comic with uh, Red Sonia on it. We have Adventures of the Planet of the Apes, number four. Uh, even though I own this in uh, Omnibus, I do want the single issues because I liked it so much. That's number four. Amazing Spider-Man 53. It says, look who's back. Doc Ock. Enough said. Doc Ock has Spider-Man cradled in his arms on a building. And his arms are going smacking the walls around him. We have Amazing Spider-Man number 119 featuring the Hulk. Spidey versus the Hulk. You won't stop Hulk from smashing or nothing can. He wants to smash this dam. He says, maybe not, green skin, but I'm still going to try, even if it kills me, which it probably will. Then we have a later issue of Amazing Spider-Man. I was missing 246. It has J. Jonah Jameson punching Spider-Man in the face. I've dreamt of this moment for years. Now, at last, J. Jonah Jameson is triumphant. Have an amazing Spider-Man annual number 10, where he's the human fly has J. Jonah Jameson in his web. Spider-Man swinging into action. We have... Journey into Mystery with Thor, 12 Center from number 105. Uh, back on the rampage again, Cobra and Mr. Hyde. A new Marvel super spectacular. It has Thor in the middle and Cobra and Mr. Hyde attacking him. <clears throat> we have Marvel Tales, uh, Spider-Man and Iceman. Um, this is the to Todd McFarlane cover. Has Spider-Man and Iceman on the cover. Then we got 229, uh, Spider-Man, Angel, and Iceman, uh, drawn by Todd McFarlane. We have a Marvel Tales number 230. Uh, they were twice monthly, uh, featuring Dazzler, drawn by Todd McFarlane, as Spider-Man in the foreground. We have Marvel Tales 234, uh, featuring Spider-Man. Uh, it says the X-Men. It's a really black cover. You don't really see the X-Men too much except silhouettes of them. And you see Spider-Man swinging in the foreground. Really nice looking Spider-Man. I like that cover. We have Marvel Tales featuring Spider-Man and the X-Men. What's going on? It says, frankly, we haven't a clue, but we know the unstoppable juggernaut is up to no good again. Plus, Spider-Ham meets Howard the Duck. This one has Spider-Man fighting Colossus and Nightcrawler. <clears throat> we got Spidey Super Stories number 28. This has him at a circus, and it says together again with Medusa. We have Spidey number 29 Super Stories. This has Kingpin uh, swinging at a baseball game, Spider-Man's body, uh, so he can hit a home run. <laughs> <clears throat> we have Spidey uh, Super Stories number 30. This has Kang on the cover over the um, White House, and Spidey is swinging in. Kang captures the White House. We have Spidey Super Stories number 33. 
Uh, this has Hulk grabbing Spider-Man at a circus. We have Spidey Super Stories number 38. This has Spidey and the Fantastic Four on a roller coaster. Um, everybody's on the roller coaster except the torch who's flying alongside it. We have Spidey Super Stories and the Electric Company featuring Spidey and Nova number 41 starring Doc Ock. And he has Nova and Doc Ock uh, captured within his arms. We have Spidey Super Stories number 46. Uh, this has Spider-Man fighting Mysterio. Disco Madness with Mysterio. We have Strange Tales number 101 featuring the Human Torch. There's some guy on the cover. It says, even though the Human Torch can't stop all those plunging men at once, and so the Destroyer wins again. If I save those men, the Destroyer will go free, but I can't let them fall. I can't. And it says, starting the fabulous Human Torch, asterisk, by permission of the Fantastic Four magazine. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Uh, we have... Strange Tales, number 105, uh, signed by Keith on the cover, whoever that is. Uh, we were speculating on Geek Brunch why so many people sign their comics. And one of the reasons me and Bill came up with is trading and maybe to get it back or to see who originally started the comic book uh, in, in the trade. Or it was if you lent it to somebody, you might have signed it so you can get your comic back. I don't know. Um, if you know why people sign their comics with their own name on it, um, let me know. Human Torch flames into action in the return of the wizard, the evil genius who has sworn to destroy the torch. The wizard's force field can't stop me. I can always fly above it. I expect you to try that torch. You will find the wizard is prepared for you. The cops on their ground. Why did the Fantastic Four let the torch tackle that fortress single-handedly? His flaming powers won't be a match for that fiend's wizardry. We have Strange Tales featuring the torch and the Fantastic Four. Number 106. This is the most damaged of the, the issues. It has a piece of tape that's taping the cover uh, across it. It says, Reed, this is Sue, Reed, do something. The torch is wounded. He hasn't a chance. Reed says, we can't, Sue. This is the way he wants it. See the human torch fighting for his life against the acrobat in a threat of the torrid twosome. Don't miss the guest appearance of the Fantastic Four in this great issue. This, this is my favorite cover here. It's Strange Tales 107. It has... The Submariner coming out with the and fighting the Human Torch. And it says, The epic battle which you demanded, the Human Torch versus Submariner. The mighty Submariner facing each, each other in a breathtaking saga of fire against water. This one is the big one. And that one's signed by somebody named Linda Wilson. It's not Wilson, it's Wilson's. I don't know too many names with the S at the end of Wilson's. Got Strange Tales 108 featuring the Human Torch. The Human Torch meets the painter of a thousand perils. And it says, get him, Thing. We must destroy the torch. Only I can make the Fantastic Four turn against the Human Torch. We have Strange Tales number 116 featuring the human torch i never realized how many issues of strange tales featuring the human torch because when i got into strange tales it was always nick fury and dr strange so um these were prior to that we got the human torch battles the thing and the thing is saying Come and get it, Panty Waste. When I'm finished with you, there won't even be a spark left. Looks like the Puppet Master's there and Alicia's there. 
They said, talk loud and clear, you dumb ape, because those will be the last words you ever say. And this one's signed by somebody, Anil Levy, I think is the name. <laughs> we have Strange Tales, uh, number 117 featuring the Human Torch. All of these are really nice covers, except that one with tape. This one's signed by, it says, owned by Mark Seagram. And it says, featuring the flaming, fighting, high-flying human torch, Marvel Comics Group proudly presents the return of the eel, one of the most elusive super criminals of all time, also featuring Doctor Strange in the terrible traps of Baron Mordo. So we got Doctor Strange coming in. Then we got Tales of Suspense, number 54. He's uh, Iron Man fighting the Mandarin. Our most talked about new villain is back. Marvel hits the jackpot with the Mandarin's revenge. Wait till you see Iron Man's new protective head mask. Old Bullethead seems to change his Iron Mask so often as a glamour girl changes her hairdos. But this one's a doozy. <laughs> We have Tales of Suspense, number 56, uh, with Iron Man on the cover. It says, Iron Man has never been more exciting or more di dramatic than his never-to-be-forgotten battle with the uncanny unicorn. In this daringly differently tale, you will gain insight into Iron Man's character that you've never known before. We have Tales of Suspense, Featuring Iron Man and Captain America number 60. Cap battles the assassins. It says two more great ones from Marvel. Enough said. Iron Man wanted for murder and Hawkeye shooting an arrow at him. And then there's some cops that are is also after Iron Man it looks like. We have Tales of Suspense number 66. Uh, this has a Iron Man underwater. Looks like he's fighting a Tuma. And then a Red Skull pointing a gun at Captain America sitting in a chair tied up. If one picture is worth a thousand words, just imagine what these two pictures are worth. I don't know. We have X-Men number 71. Our title is simply I, Lucifer. Enough said. So it's got the X-Men near a bank. It looks like they're robbing a bank. Except it's got Cyclops, Angel. Well, there's two X two X-Men coming out of the bank. One looks like he's the blob. The other one I can't make out, but they're in X-Men suits. And the Beast and Iceman and Angel and Cyclops are coming to stop the robbery. It says, featuring the untold story of how Professor X lost the use of his legs. And then we have X-Men King Size Special, which is really annual number two. This has the X-Men fighting the eel, Blizzard, Jack-o'-lantern and porcupine. It says four supervillains and you can shake X-Men at. Plus action, action, action. So that wraps up my purchases from my most recent purchase. I'll be back with uh, some more on Diamond Previews and what I read for the week. So that will end part one of this and then I'll attach part two. I'll talk to you later. Bye. These new headsets are great because I don't have to constantly unplug the USB port back and forth, back and forth until it starts to work. It just works right away. The only part that's really hard for me to get used to is they're sort of, I can't hear myself talk very well because they mute outside ambient noise. <laughs> but I guess that's kind of nice and over time, it might sound like I'm not shouting it into the mic, but sometimes I do that because I don't realize I can hear myself think. So it's another Friday. I skipped last week 
I don't remember why, probably because I just didn't feel like it. Or I didn't get out of work early. That's what happened. I had to work late. But uh, here we are again. I've already recorded the segment of recent purchases. So I'm going to jump right into, I have no questions, so I'll jump right into uh, previews. September of 1992, The Death of Superman, Volume 2, Number 9. Uh, and we we left off in the D's, which uh, we we're at DC, which is is pretty interesting because we're gonna see what DC was publishing at the time that Death of Superman came out. And DC has a quite quite a big presence here. Um, See, this goes back. Has an interview with Dan Jurgens, Louise Simonson, but it starts on page. If you want to join me, it starts on page. I, I finished Dark Horse last time. Uh, page 24 of your previews catalog in 1992. So they had these things called Rising Stars, which were like uh, trade paperbacks at the time. And this might be like the early foundation of the trade paperback. But uh, what you could pick up from DC was uh, Doom Patrol, Crawling from the Wreckage, trade paperback, collecting Doom Patrol 19 through 25, which is the Grant Morrison and Richard Case and uh, Braithwaite series. So uh, that that's what launched... Um, Doom Patrol, after the initial launch, they kept the numbering. So uh, that was a trade that was available to you. You also had the Hawk World trade paperback. Um, <clears throat> this is an outstanding uh, comic book by Timothy Truman. It, it's just amazing with uh, Alcat uh, Alcantia. But uh, this is uh, really... Uh, a great, if I remember correctly, it was a p deluxe series that had three issues, but they were almost like 48 pages to 50 pages each. And uh, <clears throat> that's what you could get. But you also could get Who's Who Update 93 Volume 1 which featured Agent Liberty, Azrael, Black Mask, Count Viper, The Netherworld, Eclipso, Evil Star, Mr. Z, and others. Um, this was a resolicit from Volume 2, Number 8. I don't remember if this Who's Who volume was the one with the punch holes where you bought the binder and you, you got those because Marvel and DC both had the who's who and then they had the who's who with the binders where you could buy the leaf the leaf things and you could put them in your, your nice binder. We have Batman Shadow of the Bat number eight. Um, part two of The Misfits, Robin must save the day when Jim Gordon, Bruce Wayne, and Mayor Kroll are kidnapped by The Misfits by Alan Grant and Tim Sale with cover by Brian Stillfreeze. <clears throat> I still am suffering from uh, <clears throat> allergies, so I'm still uh, having a rough time. Uh, this is a big one. We had Batman, Sword of Azrael, number four by o Denny O'Neill and Casada. That was, uh, at the time this was coming out, this was like an awesome miniseries that everybody was really stoked about. We had Deathstroke, the Terminator, number 18 uh, by Wolfman and Irwin. This is uh, the resurre resurrected Deathstroke leads the Brotherhood of Evil Strike Force on a raid deep into Russia. Their mission, capture a few surplus nuclear warheads covered by Mike Zek. Uh, we have Flash number 72, 72 by Mark Wade and uh, Salvador La, La Roque. 
This is Flash struggles to protect a state informant from the wrath of the alchemist while Wally confronts his relationship with Linda Park, who may be moving to another job in another city. We have Green Lantern Archives Volume 1 reprinting Showcase 22 through 24 and Green Lantern 1 through 5. I really wish I bought, bought some of these showcases, especially the Golden Age, Age showcases that featured like... Um, all-Star Comics and Dr. Fate and uh, Starman and all the Golden Age characters because I don't know if we'll ever see reprints of that material. We also have Stars of the Month, the greatest Superman stories ever told. I, I don't think I have this. Uh, greatest team-up stories ever told. I believe I do have that. Um, that was, those are collected editions. We have Green Lantern Mosaic number eight. Uh, this is uh, John Stewart Green Lantern, and it was a fantastic series. Still one of my favorite series because such an oddball is like he was the policeman and trying to keep peace on a world that was formed by many other worlds. So they like took a piece of Earth, they took a piece of this planet, this planet, and this planet, and assembled a planet, and it was just in turmoil, and he was there set to police this uh, this mosaic world. Uh, it was pretty cool. Hawk World number 30, which launched after the Hawk World series that's collected in this. Uh, so you had the prestige format Hawk World, and then you had an ongoing Hawk World by Ostrander and Truman. We had Peter Cannon Thunderbolt. So this is a Charlton comic uh, by Michael Collins and Marzan Jr. We had Robin 3000, which was an Elseworlds, took place in the future uh, by Priest and Russell. We had Shade the Changing Man, number 31, a uh, Vertigo series uh, before Vertigo existed, but they were starting to because... Oh, this might be when Vertigo did happen because they collected the Doom Patrol. And 19 wasn't officially a Vertigo title, but it, the Morrison run kind of started us down the path of Vertigo. Um, we had Shade the Changing Man by Peter Milligan and Doran and uh, Buckingham. We had the Spectre. Oh, I remember this specifically coming out during the death of Superman because this book became hot, not because everybody wanted to read the Spectre, but because they heard good things about it and there were so few copies on the stands and people heard buzz about it and it became really popular. It was by Ostrander and Mandrake and it was fantastic. This this uh, Spectre series, number one, had a glow-in-the-dark cover that to this day could be my favorite glow-in-the-dark cover ever. We had uh, Star Trek number 42 by Weinstein, and Wingham, and Star. Uh, this is uh, when DC had the license. You can see they probably had the longest-running Star Trek title outside of IDW, but they, I don't know if IDW's past that because they have so many minis, but if you count those minis as they might have passed it. I don't know. You got Superman, Man of Steel, uh, Superman Doomsday Part 5 of 6, so we're coming to the end here. Uh, Superman Weeping S t-shirt, um, only for fourteen ninety five. You get a t-shirt today, it's like 30 bucks. Uh, you got Valor, number 3. That was an interesting series by Fleming and Bright. Um, Bright, I think, just passed away recently. Uh, M.D. Bright. Uh, we have Wonder Woman, Messner Loeb's Cullens, um, Exodus into Space, Conclusion, Diana Returns to Earth. After a year-long absence, it must deal with the consequences of her absence. Oh, so this is when Brian Bolin was doing the Wonder Woman covers. We have shipping in November 17th. We have Aquaman number 14. Uh, doesn't say much by Sean McLaughlin and C. Shrek and Dvorak. 
We have Batman 488, uh, continuing the storyline of Sword of Azrael. And these covers were $1.25. Can you imagine that? Now we're at almost $4.99. Black Canary number one started Hero Worship by Brian and Von Eden. We had a collected edition, or not, though this is uh, Elseworlds, Batman the Blue, Gray, and the Bat. I don't think I have that. All these others I have. Uh, the Demon, uh, number 31, starring The Lobo by Alan Grant and Heaton. That was a really good series. Eclipso was a really good series by Keith Giffen and Fleming with art by Sears. Uh, we have Hacker Files by Chenier, Sutton, and Buckingham. Uh, I have that too. Hammerlock is a series uh, by Joyner and Sprouse. We have Heckler, uh, another Giffen series by uh, Keith Giffen and TMM Bear Bomb. Um, Hellblazer, number 61. This is when Garth Ennis was writing it. Looks like Walt uh, Simpson was doing the art. And Barrio. Then you have an article, a Death of Superman uh, interview with Louise Simonson and Dan Jurgens, and then Roger Stern. Uh, and we got Justice League of America number 70. Broken and badly injured, the league struggles to stay together after the aftermath of the shocking events of Superman 75, which is the death of Superman. We have Legion of Superheroes number 39. Um, that's by TMM, Beerbaum, and Giffen with uh, Imoniman, Sturt Imoniman, I believe. Uh, we have New Chi Titans by Luis Simonson, Jimenez, and McCarthy. Uh, we have a Robin Hero Reborn trade paperback by Alan Grant and Dixon with art by Bray Fogel and Lyle. We have Sandman number 45, Overwell into Vertigo, by the way, uh, by Gaiman and Jill Thompson. Of course, we have Superman 75, The Death of Superman, with a cover price of 250 uh, Robin 3, Cry of the Huntress by Dixon Lyle. Um, Robin 3, Newsstand Edition. So you have the Deluxe and the Newsstand. Same thing with Superman uh, 75. You have the Collector's Edition and Newsstand Edition you could order. We have a Wizard and Previews, uh, which has a checklist of Superman titles. Interesting. And then we got <clears throat> Man of Steel Collected Edition. Uh, some some trades you could get. Oh, that's the John Byrne one. Uh, Superman Archives by Siegel and Schuster. Uh, number one and two. Which I now have the Golden Age Omnibus, and I'm so happy to have them. Because, god dang, those... They're such good stories. They are incredible I got to get back on that. <clears throat> I got a World's Finest trade paperback by uh, Gibbons Rude. This was the deluxe formatted World's Finest. Adventures of Superman 498. Funeral for a Friend, one of eight. Animal Man number 55 by Delano and Pew. So Morrison is well gone, but after this, we have the trade paperback by Morrison, Trug, and Hazelwood and Grummet. I have Batman Legends of the Dark Knight number 41 by Wilson and Joyner. Then we have a Batman Death in the Family trade paperback. That one's been done a lot. And a Lonely Place of the Dying trade paperback. We have Black Condor number 8 by Brian Augustine and Rags Morales. We have Congorilla number 3 by Steve Englehart and Neil Vokes. We have Green Lantern number 35 by J.G. Jones and Mark M.D. Bright. Um, we have Green Lantern, Emerald Dawn, trade paperback by Giffen, G. Jones, and Osley, and Bright, and Thongle. And the road back to, so it looks like they're focusing on Green Lantern on those trades. 
Got Legion 93, number 49, by Barry Kitson and R. Smith. Uh, one of my favorite series was the Legion uh, year number series. They're fantastic. Came, they were launched after Invasion. Have Robin 3000, number two, which we talked about, number one. We have Star Trek The Next Generation, number 40, 42. So that one also had a long-running situation. Showcase 93, number one. Uh, focusing on Catwoman. This one had a Catwoman story, a Blue Devil story, and a Cyborg story. We had Swamp Thing 127 by uh, Nancy Collins, Scott Eaton. So that was a Vertigo. We had Team Titans by Wolfman, McGuire, and Bleiberg. We have Action Comics 685, Funeral for a Friend Part 2. Dark Stars number 4 by Friedman. That was a good series. Uh, kind of needed to read that if you're reading Green Lantern too, because uh, they're both kind of like Spacebound Police. Got Dead Man Exorcism number 2 by Mike Barron and Kelly Jones. That's fantastic. If you're into Dead Men, these deluxe formatted things were amazing. You got Detective Comics 655. Uh, we got some Swamp Thing trade paperbacks, uh, Dark Genesis trade paperback, and Love and Death trade paperback. We got Batman Master of the Future and the Cult trade paperback. So a lot of trades solicited as well. Got Doom Patrol number 63 by Morrison and Case. The Essential Showcase Volume 1. That would be fun to have. Collect stories from the initial run of Showcase. I didn't know that existed. That would be a fantastic black and white book. <clears throat> it's only 20 bucks, too. <clears throat> Green Arrow number 70 by Mike Grell and Hoberg. There was also a trade, Green Arrow, Longbow Hunters. Justice League Europe, number 46, by J.G. Jones and Randall. Justice Society of America, number 6, by Strzewski and Paraback. We have Robin 3, Cry of the Hunters, number 3, and the newsstand edition for that. We have Timberwolf, number 3, by Gordon and Phillips. Uh, Batman Adventures, number four, by Pasco, Raider, and Burchett. Uh, there's a Batman Birth of the Demon hardcover graphic novel. Batman Son of the Demon softcover. And Batman Tales of the Demon. So you can see a lot of trades, especially Batman stuff. Batman Vengeance of the Bane, special number one, by Dixon and Nolan. Got Guy Gardner, number four. Uh, Lobo in Fantasy. To side Scarlet number one. I did buy this. It's a weird vampire type um, comic book. Continued from the pages of Batman. Got Streets number two. That was a cop one. I, I purchased that too. Uh, we got Who's Who Update 93 Volume 2. And Fast Forward number two from DC Piranha Press. And that wraps up DC. So a lot being published there. And I'm going to take a pause for the cause to tally up the numbers. And then I'll be back right real quick. All right, I'm back. And I made some totals. Uh, this is going to be March 25th through uh, April 7th. And I didn't take a lot of notes on this. So this is going to be a little quick. Because I've been kind of lazy on the note taking. But um, let me know if you really care. <laughs> but uh, as far as uh, movies watched that week, I mean, for reading 34 comics, I watched a lot of shit. We got Dr. No, uh, Man with the Golden Gun, Godzilla X Kong, License to Kill, No Time to Die. So four Bond films and one Godzilla movie at the theater. That's quite a bit. They were all four out of fives. So I enjoyed them all. So um, I, I have officially wrapped up the James Bond films. And 
not sure I know where I'm going from there. Um, if I keep what, what I, I might go Planet of the Apes. I, I am have gone to watch X Men '97, so I'm six episodes slash seven into the latest. I think I'm getting close to uh, the penultimate uh, for the series. Um, I've been really happy about that series. I need to ping Rob because I'm really curious if he's been watching that as an X-Men fan. It's really good. I know he didn't watch the original cartoon because he thought he was too cool and old. Because um, I watched X-Men uh, cartoon when I was... I, I don't remember what year it came out, but it was in the 90s and... Was it 80s? Did it start in the 80s? But I, I was in college by by then, you know? So I was recording them on my VHS player, believe it or not, on Saturday mornings because I couldn't always watch them on time. And then I'd watch them. And sometimes Barb would watch them with me, but she didn't watch a lot. Um, when I recorded all the episodes, I think I still have the videotapes in my storage lock, locker of the entire series. And now I can, you know, as, as things have changed, uh, I can watch the whole thing on Disney if I wanted to. But uh, it's been a really fun ride. Uh, some emotional stuff in there. I, I actually got emotional with what I saw with Gambit and Rogue. Um, I, I thought it was really well done. Uh... So now we have 34 comics, pretty good week. Uh, I'm always happy when I have 30 comics a week. That's what it should be, but it should be like 60, but life gets in the way, man. We have two Zenoscope, 25 Marvel, five Image, and two Dark Horse. We'll start with uh, three out of fives. We have Sir Edward Gray Asheron. This was a weird one, and I have been following a lot of the um, witch stuff. But uh, this is some demon with horns on his eyes and his relationship with Hellboy. I did not know what the hell was going on because I don't read much Hellboy. So this one was really hard to follow, but I can't really slam it for my being naive. And in terms of the quality of the comic, it was fine. I enjoyed aspects of it. We have Storm number five. Uh, I was very high on this series going in, but this I petered out as uh, we got to the finale. Uh, the conclusion to Storm as she battles her ex-boyfriend who has merged into a storm god. It just got kind of really crazy. I did like the angsty shit at the beginning of this series about... Kitty being all pissed off about Storm getting a mohawk and thinking she has to go get tattoos. <laughs> but she got fake tattoos, but you don't know that. But it, it makes sense because uh, retro, you know, if you were to go back and read this in continuity, you'd be like, where, where did these fucking tattoos go? Um, did she just have them removed? Well, they were not real tattoos. So we got Bell Dragon Claw number one. Bell is the monster hunter of the Xenoscope uniform. Sorry, uniform universe. I gave that a three out of five. That was good. We have uh, the four out of fives. There was a lot. Uh, we have Children of the Vault. That one probably is the number is a three out of five, but I gave it a four out of five. It really should be in the three out of fives. Um, the Children of the Vault are reawakened and serving the world with their demise of Krakoa. Uh, Bishop and Cable are teaming up to fight um, the enemy. I really bought this because of Bishop and Cable, and I know I don't know shit about the Children of the Vault, even though I probably have the issues. Either I didn't read them, or they didn't like register in my brain we have number 40 of wolverine this is uh the current 
series, the Kokoa Wolverine, uh, ongoing number 40. He asked Spider-Man to hack into the Orchis to gain data as he tries to get revenge for Kokoa. Been a been a very entertaining uh, um, series of Wolverine. I do own this in physical. So far, everything I own in physical here, uh, except for the next one. But uh, I have been reading it digitally in the middle of the night. So I've been catching up on a lot of Wolverine on my iPad, even though I have the physical copy. We have Miles Morales, number four and five. The current series before... This is the series before... Uh, before the current one. So the volume before this current one as of 2024. And uh, number four and five, I, I, I have been enjoying this. This uh, started off with uh, him being stalked by a very jealous person that knew his identity because he took a scholarship away from her, essentially. And later on, he's teaming with Misty Knight, and she's being a mentor to him. And he's struggling with issues with trying to keep his friends distant and far away because he's worried that people are going to come after him. And uh, we got Gru, Gods Against Gru number three. I finally read that after reading one, two, and four, because uh, I read number three of the new ongoing. We have Witchblade versus Darkness, number one half, Tales of the Witchblade, four through six. Um, these are... Witchblade versus Darkness was kind of the Wizard Magazine thing, and it wasn't like a, a big issue other than they they teamed up, and then... You had the Tales of the Witchblade, really well-drawn books, uh, telling about historical pieces of different characters that carried the Witchblade. So now I, I didn't buy any of these issues. I read them digitally um, on the Kindle app and then enjoyed it, it immensely. So if I do run across these in a dollar bin or something, I will be picking up Tales of the Witchblade for sure. Uh, we got Zodiac versus Dark Death Force, another Xenoscope book that sort of fell outside of their grim fairy tales, women stuff. I mean, they, they, it exists in the same universe, but these are like more armored up guys that, um, that falling into the fantasy in the different realms. So we got, uh... Witchblade number 25, uh, that was a really good issue. I, I have read 25 issues of Witchblade. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and I imagine I'll keep going. Got Carnage number 5. Uh, Carnage goes after Dylan at his work and slaughters his co-workers. He wants Dylan to draw, draw in his father, Eddie, and... Uh, it's been a really violent comic book. I, I've been enjoying it. We have Venom Lethal Protector. Is, is this Venom was trying... This is a legacy book, or I don't know what they call it, but it's like retconned into some old continuity <clears throat> um, with, the, with writers that wrote the character, like David Mich Michelini wrote this comic book, which is amazing. That's why I bought it. And I was very entertained by this one, um, where he's trying to protect uh, some stuff. But the, I, I really liked it. We have, oh, maybe I'm getting that confused with the other one, the Wolverine one. I still enjoyed it, but I, I'm trying to think if it was Michelini that did this. I'm pretty sure he, it was him. We have Night Thrasher, uh, the current series. Night Thrasher goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with his new armor against Vibe. Uh, looks like he looks like when the cops get involved, there's going to be a lot of problems. What happened there? I was trying to drink something. The little flap didn't open up. 
We have Jackpot Gang War, Luke Cage Gang War, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu Gang War, number two and three, Luke Cage three and four, Jackpot number one, Spider Woman number three and four, Amazing Spider-Man 42 through 45 Gang War, and the five out of five was the Daredevil Gang War two through four, which was really Electra, but I really liked that one because the story was interesting and the art was just spot on. I don't know where they're fighting, finding some of these new artists, but really good stuff. I really enjoyed Gang War uh, for many reasons. Um, I enjoyed the art. I enjoyed the teams. I enjoyed how they took New York and divided it up into different people defending different areas and different villains attacking those areas. Um, I thought it was well told uh, as far as an event. Uh, you don't usually see an event where every book matters, but I felt like for this event, every book did matter because it covered a different era area. So I was really happy with Gang War. We have uh, April 1st through April 7th. Uh, this day I'll always remember April Fool's is the day that Ed Piscor died, um, unfortunately committed suicide. You probably already know that, but very sad day that day. <clears throat> I didn't even think it was real because of the day. Like I was like, who could be joking about this shit, right? Uh, so that week I watched Casino Royale, um, the first one. This was with Peter Sellers and David... Um, has Woody Allen. Why can't I think of the other actor, David? Something. And the David character plays the main James Bond, and Peter Sellers is another James Bond, and Woody Harrelson is the son of an uncle or something that is like James Bond, and he's the villain, it turns out, or one of the villains. But, uh, it's a comedy. It's really weird. It doesn't feel, fit into the James Bond mythos at all, in my opinion. I don't know how they decided to do like an Austin Powers before Austin Powers. But uh, the only thing was amazing is there was a lot of beautiful women in it. There wasn't like just one Bond girl. There was 50 of them. And... Um, <clears throat> One of them later appears in a real James Bond film, uh, Dr. No. So she's in this one, which is the first James Bond film. <clears throat> and Dr. No is the first real James Bond film. We have Roadhouse, the second one. This is uh, not really a remake, but a reimagining of Roadhouse. It was really good. I gave it a four out of five. I gave Casino Royale uh, the first one. Uh, three out of five, whereas the new one is more like a five out of five. But um, I enjoyed the new Roadhouse. It wasn't quite as good as the original. The original, I, I just love. Uh, the five out of fives were uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm and Winning Time. Uh, Winning Time is a miniseries on HBO Max about the Lakers and Curb Your Enthusiasm is a a show uh, comedy with Larry David um, playing himself uh, on HBO Max. Uh, we have a total of 25 uh, comics. One Rebel, two Opus, uh, 14 Marvel, one Image, two Eros, uh, one DC, one Dark Horse, three Antarctic. We have... Starting with the four out of fives, we have Power Pack Into the Storm, number one. The power, the powers go on vacation, and Franklin Richards joins them, but is having visions of aliens attacking. A snark and a horse-like kid show up when they are chased by an adult snark. We have exciting comics, uh, number 35, 38, and 39. 35, I was just catching up with Bill because I missed that issue. And it really should have been that week, 37, 38, 39, but I already read 37, so I had read. And uh, 35 did not disappoint because I was down on 36 
because I was confused, and it's because 35 gave a lot of information you needed to enjoy 36. The downside of an anthology, you miss a good chunk of the story, and you're a little lost. Elizabeth Bathory, chapters 5 and 6. Uh, this is a nasty, nasty book. Probably the nastiest book. Beautifully drawn, by the way. It's from Eros. Triple uh, X comic. Uh, two daughters witness the death of their father and mother and have sex with vampires. And then the witches go to a demonic orgy. I'm breaking that down for you. and yeah, Maybe you won't have to read Elizabeth Bathory. <laughs> We got Wolverine number 40. I thought I already covered this one. I did. So I need to subtract that guy out. I need to delete that and make it 24 comics. Because I already read that. I was like, that sounds familiar. I don't know how that happened. And then Marvel decreases by... One. I read Wolverine 1 through 11, and this is the series by Paul Cornell prior to Charles Soule doing the death of Wolverine. So it's a very odd take on this. It's Wolverine with a gun because he lost his powers. He only has the gun in issue 1. He shoots somebody. At least you think he shoots somebody. It's really a life model decoy. But... uh it, it it didn't tell you that until way later. I think it was like five issues later. So you're like, Wolverine's a fucking murderer. We already know he murders people with his claws, right? But we don't know he'd pull out a gun and just blow the guy's brains out. Um, he's working undercover trying to take down Sabretooth. Um, and he's working for this guy called Mr. Offer. Because he makes offers. <laughs> it leads up to the death of Wolverine. We have Day Run Dawn Runner. Uh, a woman is going to receive a new mech to fight alien kaiju. This time she will meld with the armor. But when she fights with the kaiju, she finds she is teleported into the future and merged with a soldier. Got Faust number 12. Faust battles Mr. Fun Demon. While M talks a lot about his plan and gives birth to Jade. <clears throat> At this time, M looks like... If you ever see Word Science and you see Chet, the brother, the older brother Chet. Um, and he, um, when she turns him into a monster, she turns him into this like blob-like creature. That's what M looks like before he gives birth to uh, Sarah. So, um, I mean Sarah. She gives birth to Jade. Um, the reporter tries to rescue Jade, but then Claire goes get some sex bullets out of her crotch and is going to kill Jade. <laughs> we have Exodus, Tales of the Damned. This was really good. A sister tries to find out more about her Missing sister, which leads her to a small town, zombified by a haunting radio music. And I really like the ending like that. It was like a Tales from the Crypt ending. So that's based on the band Exodus, because most of Opus comics are either a Frank Frazetta thing or they're a musical thing, you know, written by mu the, the musicians or a story about songs in their libraries. Uh, that was a 4 out of 5. So everything there was a 4 out of 5. We go into the 5 out of 5s. We have Punisher 2099, number 19, the story of Vendetta. She wants to kill anyone that did uh, females wrong by reprogramming them. The police, Gold, Robba, Gold Robot, and Punisher are concerned that, uh, by, or sorry, are cornered by the police. Uh, but Punisher saves the chip of the robot and puts it into his Punisher bike. It was such a good uh, romp. Uh, I, I really want to finish this Punisher 2099 run um, because I 
I have really enjoyed the issues and I, I don't own a lot of them. I think I own like one through eight, maybe 11 or 12. And then I stopped for the rest of it. And now I'm just picking up issues. Um, I don't know why I stopped probably because at that time I was like, I'm getting too much and I don't have time to read it. Uh, like I, I don't have time to read anything now. But I was a little smarter back then. Um, now, Dawn Attack, number one. This one is an Opus one. I really enjoyed this. I don't think it's going to finish, though. I got refunded on it. It looks like Opus is going the way of the Dodo. And uh, unfortunately, they, they produce really well-drawn comics, really good stories. And I, I wish people would have gave them a try. Their prices were very high. A lot of the books were... 666 the number of the beast so six dollars and 66 cents um which probably kept a lot of people away but a princess tries to keep her society alive in the absence of her father and technology keeps breaking down and there is a huge food shortage invaders are on the horizon we have sam and twitch case files sam beats up an informant and gets them both suspended from the police force. Not not the he beats up the, because he beats up the informant. Uh, Sam and Twitch are both suspended, and Twitch is like, I can't deal with your shit anymore, Sam. You know, a murder case is called into Twitch, but he does not answer his phone. Um, they're ask they're calling to ask for his expertise and help, and it's like a bunch of bodies that have been chopped up. Last but not least, the five out of five. So five out of fives are Punisher twenty ninety nine to Superman Family one seventy seven. Um, this is an amazing issue. I've talked about it on on a whole podcast on the DC Noise podcast feed because I loved it so much. Supergirl is hunted down by an alien star mate. Uh, that was a fantastic story. Then you got Lois, Lana, and Clark land on a mysterious island of barbarians where a woman has to be wed or go into the cave of doom and then lois has to marry clark and lana has to marry superman but they are rescued in time lucy goes undercover as an actress this is the third story um on a plane to take photos of employees so she can report them back to management and jimmy poses on that same flight as a magician to see if he can find an inf information about a criminal and with their aliases they fall in love with each other e even though they don't know it's jimmy olsen and and lois lane not lois but uh lucy lane it is it is amazing story i absolutely love this comic book and uh that wraps us up so the five out of Fives are Punisher 2099, not number 19, Dawn Attack number one from Opus, Salmon Twitch Case Files number one, Superman Family 177, and Daredevil Gang War two through four. So I want to thank you for listening. Uh, again, you can contact me at mike at comicbooknoise.com. Um, send me email and you can tweet me at mike. Myers Brunch or on uh, what is that thing called X that's where I'm at but the other one why can't I think of the damn thing hold on a second instead of struggling I'll just go there Blue Sky <laughs> had a serious brain fart there at Mike Myers Brunch. Uh, the website is geekbrunchpodcast.com. And please send me questions to at Mike Myers Brunch or on the episode threads that are located at Facebook under Geek Brunch Podcast. Click the like button, follow the episode threads there, and you can ask questions. And I will answer those questions on this show. So I want to thank you for listening, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to my ranting. Um, so we'll talk to you soon. Bye.